Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 264. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with yet another solo episode. Now, you may have noticed if you've been listening to the last few episodes that it's been several weeks since we've heard from Joe Casey and Joanna Hennen. This is because I didn't plan things very well before we went into summer holiday mode and everyone went on vacation. So Joanna and I were hanging out in England last couple weeks ago and didn't make the time to do the podcast episode because we didn't plan before she went away for a month and a half. Same with Joe Casey. Joe's on holiday now and we didn't plan it in time. So we will be back in a couple of weeks with more episodes with Joe Casey and Joanna Hennen. It will not be endless, extensive podcast episodes with me, which I hope you're enjoying because I've been really enjoying them a lot. I've really been enjoying kind of getting, delving deeper into a topic and looking at it more in depth. So I hope you've been enjoying them as much as I have. As always, if you have any ideas for future episodes, please let me know. Pop them into the Facebook group or you can send me an email, holly at hollywharton.com. So today I'm going to talk about one of the shadow sides of business. It can be really easy to get stuck in the downside because business has its ups and downs. Sometimes everything's just flowing brilliantly. Sometimes it feels like shit. And it can be really easy to get stuck in those shitty bits and kind of get trapped in that downward spiral of business crap and just feeling bad about ourselves and putting ourselves down and judging ourselves and comparing ourselves. And it can be really yucky. So I wanted to talk today about how to get out of that because we've all been there more than once, probably. It's something that can happen from time to time. It's perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with you if you're, if you're experiencing it. But I think it's important for us to focus on getting out of those modes because it's fine, it's normal, but it's not useful for us to wallow in the depths of the darkness for too long. So today we're going to talk about how you can climb up out of the deep, dark well of despair that sometimes happens in business and get out of there and start moving on with stuff. Before I get into today's episode, I wanted to say a big thank you to our new patron, Naomi. Thank you so much for supporting me, for supporting this show. And to those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I would like to refer you back to the Patreon episode, which I think is really, really interesting and useful way of how you can use Patreon to create a new income stream in your business. So that's episode 262. That's just two episodes ago. So if you want to learn more about Patreon, I welcome, um, I would love for you to check out that episode. I welcome any comments or questions you may have about Patreon. And if you have ever gotten value from this podcast, if you would like to work with me in some way, but aren't sure how, and maybe you're not ready for one-to-one sessions, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton, and you can support my work there. There are lots of ways you can work with me at all different price levels, or you can just support me for a dollar a month, five dollars a month, whatever feels right for you. So that's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. And thank you again to the new patrons. 
Next, I wanted to respond to some an email that I got from someone who had asked me about my kind of pay what you can pricing. So a couple months ago, I offered, I think it was three sessions that I offered to my Facebook group and to my email list, pay what you can. Because, you know, if you listen to my pricing episode that I did a couple of months ago with uh, Joanna Hennen, that was episode 257, if you um, wanted to look that up, I think that was a really good episode. We explored whether or not online prices are inflated and if we're all charging too much or not. And as a result of that, I realized I really wanted to make my work more accessible to people who might not have the funds to work one-to-one with me. Now, I do think that I provide a lot of help to people via this podcast, via my books, which are very, very useful and practical and can really help you with your mindset. But I also wanted to offer one-to-one sessions at a more accessible price. And I kept getting this intuitive nudge to do pay-what-you-can pricing. And I had a lot of resistance to it because I know times that I've seen other people offer this. I've always thought, well, I don't want to offer too low and insult the person. So when I sent out the email, when I put the message in the Facebook group, I made it clear that I was not going to be offended pay what you can, even if that's what you may consider to be a small amount of money. So I wanted to kind of give you an update on that because I got this email recently and plus tons of other people have asked me about it. So again, I did this because I had an intuitive nudge. And this was before I had set up my Patreon account. And I'm really, really happy with the Patreon account because it gives me a a way to support people on a regular basis at any price point. So I've got prices from $1 a month to $1,111 a month. And that obviously includes a fair amount of one-to-one work with me. But this was before Patreon. So I wanted to offer people a way to get one-to-one work with me at whatever price they could pay. And I limited it to, to three sessions and they had to be within like a month, booked within a month's time or something like that. So they all booked, all three of them. What happened was I had one returning client who didn't have the funds to work with me again, but wanted to, so she paid me a certain amount. And then the other two people were new clients. So I had varying payments of different price levels. They were all significantly less than my usual charge for a single session, which was fine. That was the whole point of offering this. I was really pleased to be able to help people that didn't have the funds but really wanted to work with me. They were all lovely to work with. The two new people were fantastic. The returning client is someone I love to work with. So they were all lovely to work with. It was all just fantastic sessions. However, I felt guilt around people who had paid my full prices to work with me. Obviously, they could have booked an extra session at the pay what you can, but had a lot of conflict around these people paying significantly less and then other people paying my full price. So as a result of that, it got me to thinking, like, what did I want to do? How am I going to offer discounts again? Because I've always felt weird about discounts because I think we've all bought something or signed up for something and then like a week later you see it go on sale and you think, ah, if I just waited. It doesn't feel fair somehow. So you may have this issue, you may not. Again, to recap, I'm super happy I did it. I'm super happy I was able to help these people who couldn't pay my full prices, but I'm gonna do it differently in the future. So I've got, again, Patreon, which is the way that people can work with me on a regular basis for a variety of price points, and they can get different things for different price points. But in terms of one-to-one sessions, I don't plan on doing another pay what you can again, and I don't plan on doing sales or discounts because they just don't feel right for me. They don't feel in integrity. What I will do is offer discounted sessions from time to time for charity. So I've done a few charity sessions via auction for my friend Sarah, who ran the London Marathon this year and was supporting this cat charity that I really love and care about. And so I did, I offered up two sessions for that where people could book in at a discounted rate. And there was actually an auction that went on um, for people to bid on this session with me. I did first one session and then another session. And that was fantastic as well. I had one new client that came to me through that and one returning client. Fantastic experience. 
I also have a friend and client of mine who lost her home in the lava flows of Hawaii this year. She's got to go fund me to help not only support her family find a temporary place to live since their house no longer exists, but also she's helping her neighbors and all the other people who've lost their homes in the lava flow. And I think it was about a month ago, I offered discounted sessions to people. If they donated $100 to Julie's GoFundMe, they could send me the receipt and I would give them one hour session. So things like that feel good to me because that's offering discounted sessions, but it's in a different format. Um, Again, this may work for you. This may not work for you. But that's how I think I'm going to be handling it from this way forward. So discounted sessions for charity or for helping other people out and the Patreon. Again, the Patreon, I'm loving it. I really enjoyed setting up the different tiers, looking at different ways that I can help people on an ongoing basis based on whatever they can afford. Super excited about that. And I would love to see you join me there. So check out Patreon not only for supporting me, but also to see how you can use it in your business. I think, just check it out. I mean, I, I absolutely love it as a platform, and I'm really looking forward to creating more kind of community help around my work on Patreon. So that is the very extensive kind of introduction to this episode. And now I want to get into the meat of what we're going to talk about. So what are you going to learn today? I'm going to talk about why resilience is so important in business. I know I've talked about this before with Joe Casey, but I really want to dig into it a little bit more. And I want to explain why resilience doesn't necessarily mean like a stiff upper lip and being tough and rigid. It's, it's different. Um, you can be resilient and still be kind of soft and feminine. I'm going to talk about how you can pull yourself out of that downward, downward spiral of business despair. I'm going to discuss how you can reframe your current uncomfortable situation into something else. I'm going to talk about how you can reach inside yourself and tap into your personal power. I'm going to look at how you can go within rather than seeking external help, although that's okay too if that's what you need. I'm going to look at how you can focus on what you do want, which is personal power, and rather than what you don't want, which is that sense of weakness. Finally, I'm going to talk about how you can get the mindset you need to make all of this happen. I'm really excited about this episode. I was kind of struggling to come up with a topic for today when I sat down to record, and I pulled a couple of oracle cards from one deck, and they were both really random, and I didn't see how I could turn them into a podcast episode. And then I reached for my druid plant oracle deck, and I pulled the plantain card and it came out reversed. And the second I started reading the description for the reversed meaning of the card, I had my topic for today. So I'm very excited about this, and I hope you find it interesting and useful as always. So let's start out by talking about what is resilience. The standard definitions involve resilience being the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, toughness, or the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape, elasticity. And I think it's really important to look at resilience from these two perspectives. I love that it includes not only that definition of toughness, but also of elasticity and stretchiness and bouncing back and more kind of a soft flow. I kind of see that first definition as being very masculine energy and the second definition being very feminine energy. So it's that tough elasticity. It's a perfect blend of masculine and feminine energies. It's being strong. It's recovering, but in a flexible, pliable, soft, flowing way. So this was really important for me to start out the episode with because I think oftentimes when I think resilience, I think like tough like a rock or strong like a rock. But not necessarily. Resilience is all about that kind of soft, flexible type of toughness and recovering and springing back into shape. And I think that's a really useful perspective to come at this from because in business, like I said, you know, we've got our ups, we've got our downs, and it's important not to get stuck in the downs. Now, years ago, I read this Seth Godin book called The Dip. 
And I recently, I think it was on a podcast, and I don't remember what podcast it was, but someone was interviewing someone else. And this person said that every month, I think it was, or every time he goes into a dip, he reads this, rereads this Seth Godin book, The Dip. And I'm going to link to this in the show notes. And I'm actually going to go over and buy a copy myself because my old copy ended up, I don't know, it was from my previous life in Latin America. I think it's still in Latin America somewhere. So I just popped over to Amazon. So I'm going to read you the description of this book because I really highly recommend it. And I think it's totally relevant to this podcast. So it's called The Dip. The extraordinary benefits of knowing when to quit and when to stick. So the description says every new project or career relationship starts out exciting and fun. And it gets harder and less fun until it hits a low point, really hard and really not fun. At this point, you might be in a dip, which will get better if you keep pushing, or a cul-de-sac, which will never get better no matter how hard you try. The hard part is knowing the difference and acting on it. So this book explains just how to tell the difference between a dip and a cul-de-sac. Again, I read this book, ooh, it came out in 2007, and I think I read it way back then. It's really, really good. If I remember correctly, it's short. Like a lot of Seth Godin's books, they're really just kind of short to the point and very powerful. So highly recommend that if you're currently going through a dip. So if you're experiencing that kind of, that feeling of stuckness and you've kind of ended up in that downward spiral of uh, frustration and despair and you're feeling sorry for yourself, and you feel like everyone's doing better than you are, and you feel like you've worked so hard, and you're just not getting results, and it's so damn hard, and why is it easy for everyone else, and why me, and you know that crappiness. It very much is a downward spiral, and if you allow yourself to get stuck there, it feels like crap. The longer you stay there, it's harder to get out. And it completely skews your perspective on your situation. And it's just so damaging. Again, I said this at the beginning. It's totally normal. It happens to everyone. It will happen from time to time. There's a book about it. It's called The Dip. But the important thing is to not wallow in that crappiness and stay there and victimize yourself and feel like everyone's better than I am and I'm absolutely shit and this is terrible. So how can you recover from this difficulty? How can you spring back into normal business situations where things are flowing and things are functioning? I think it starts with reframing your current situation. So looking at the gifts of the situation, no matter how crappy they are. So, and sometimes you can't see that when you're in the dip, which is why you have to make a conscious effort to sit and journal and focus on what might be going on for you. So towards the end of last year, remember I met up with a friend to go horseback riding and we were talking in the car to the, on the way there and she was saying how her business was amazing and she was doing really well and it was all fantastic and wonderful. And at the time, I was going through absolute dip. I didn't have any paying clients at the time. I was going through a total dry spell. And I remember telling her this and feeling really awful about myself and obviously comparing myself to her. And I think I actually did a podcast episode about like comparing myself based on that conversation because our situations were so different. And it wasn't until a while later that I realized the whole reason I had that space of no clients, that gift of having no clients, which I didn't see it like that at the time, was to give me the space to realize that I wanted to focus on my writing and not focus on filling up my client calendar with client sessions. And since then, I've gotten more and more and more focused on how I want to manage my time. And I'm thinking now is my current thoughts, and I was just discussing this today with my master gut group, is that I want to focus on AB week. So like have one week where I just focus on my writing, one week where I do client calls and alternate that way because my brain f works really, really well when I'm hyper focusing on one thing for a certain amount of time, big chunks of time, which is why my workcation weekends are so useful and effective for me. So I think that's the way going forward. And, but this has been such kind of a journey of coming to this understanding. And it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had that dry spell 
towards the end of last year when I had nothing coming in. But that gave me the space. Like the, the gift of that was the space to think and to realize, okay, this is not working right now. What do I want to do instead? And it was like, oh, writing is really easy for me. Maybe I need to do more of that. Something that was so obvious to other people, but not to me. So maybe start to reframe your situation. If you're currently in a dip, if you're currently in a crappy downward spiral space, what is the gift? So like if you're not getting any clients, what is the gift of that? If you've had a lot of cancellations lately or people rescheduling, what's the gift in that? Is that giving you space to work on something else? If your online program is not selling to anyone, what's the gift in that? So sometimes when we have these dry spells, it's a sign that we're not focusing on the right thing and we need to be focusing on something else. But sometimes it's just a sign that we are being given the gift of time and space to reevaluate and to focus on what we want and to focus on what our path is like. And do we want to take a fork in the path? What do we want to do? So focus on the gift of what you're currently experiencing. And this is a massive reframe. And sometimes when you're in that dark spot, you kind of be, you know, someone says to you like, reframe this. What's the gift in this situation? You want to like punch them in the face. So if you're feeling that now, that's totally fine. I was having a slight moment yesterday of just, and I was talking about that today in my master gut. And I was saying how, you know, I'd had a couple of calls that weren't what I expected. And I was hoping to find someone, you know, to help me with my book launches. And these people weren't a good fit. And I didn't have anyone else. And I didn't know who to go to. And I was just really just irritable and grumpy about it. And it kind of messed up like the end of my day yesterday. And, you know, it happens. I didn't get stuck in it. Today was a different day. I felt a lot better. I went back and kind of countered with an email to one of the people saying, you know, I really want to work with you, but I don't need this whole gigantic thing. I just need a small part of it. Do you do this? Do you know anyone else? So I ended up bouncing back and looking at other solutions, other people I can work with. And I'm going to, you know, if she says she doesn't know anyone and she can't do it, then I'll find someone else. But I bounced back from that because after I had some time, you know, overnight to rest and sleep, I was able to kind of turn around my perspective by thinking about other things that I could do. So yeah, think about how you can reframe your current situation. Like what's the gift you're being given? Like it feels like shit. Things didn't happen the way you expected. Things didn't happen the way you wanted them to go. But what's the good side of that? What's the bright side of that? What, what are you getting from that? And journal on that channel on it. Like whatever you do to get clarity, do that. Because if you just kind of sit there and stare at a wall and think, what's the bright side of this? It's not that easy to come up with sometimes. So, but spend some time looking on how you can reframe that. So the next situation is, again, along with reframing your situation and looking for the gift, it's about reaching in, going within and tapping into your personal power, your own power, your own strengths rather than seeking external help. Now, I need to add a little aside here. Yeah, sometimes ex external help is really, really useful. So if you've got a business coach, if you've got a mentor, if you've got a mastermind, of course, take this topic to them. But don't expect that other people are going to have the magic wand that's going to fix everything or the magic idea or the fairy dust that's going to turn everything around. Get help if that's what you need. Get help if you have that support. Get help if you want to, and that's what feels right. And also, go within and tap into your own personal power. This is really important because it teaches you that you can pull yourself out of these situations on your own. You can recover from that dark spot. You can bounce back into shape. You can get yourself out of that deep, dark hole of business despair. You can. Now, personal power is something that can be really tricky. There is a really, really old podcast episode, number 41, called How to Step into Your Personal Power in Business with Jack McNeil. So tap into that if that's uh, something you'd like to check out in terms of additional information or support if you're going through one of these experiences right now. Personal power is something that I really struggled with. 
And as I've said before, when I first started on this journey of mindset five years ago, I really struggled with self-confidence, self-esteem, self-worth, trusting myself. And I think that's why the heart-centered energy work that I'm doing now is so focused on self-love and self-acceptance and self-trust, because those three things are very much a part of your personal power, of tapping into your sense of groundedness and power and your ability to do stuff and take action in your business and life. So what is personal power? Personal power, and I think a lot of people see the word power as a negative thing. I see it as a very positive thing, obviously depending on how you use it. But to me, personal power is based on your confidence, your self-esteem, your self-trust, your self-acceptance, that kind of sense of like grounded, I am okay with me, I like me, and I know what I'm doing, I'm taking action, and I'm doing it. It's when you are in that state that you can speak your truth, you can speak your opinions, you can broadcast your message out to the people who are here and are ready to hear it. It's such a beautiful, grounded state of power. Personal power is such a big deal that I included it in my business beliefs and my business blocks books as one of the 15 categories of beliefs. It's that important. So to me, one of the most important things is reaching deep inside yourself and tapping into this personal power. How the heck do you do that? So I'm a mindset person, so I'm going to give you the mindset advice, which is do some work on your lower chakras, do some work on your beliefs in relation to personal power, do the mindset work related to that topic specifically. Use whatever techniques you use with yourself to change your mindset, work with someone else to help you with this. If personal power is too big of a topic for you, look at my books, Business Blocks and Business Beliefs to get some ideas. But the idea is to focus on the, what I think are the primary ingredients of personal power, which are self-confidence, self-trust, self-acceptance, self-love, self-esteem. Those are also kind of abstract topics, but if you go online, if you look for resources, if you go through my books, you'll get a clear idea of specific things that you can do to change your beliefs, to boost your self-confidence, self-acceptance, self-love, self-trust, self-esteem. So work on those beliefs using whatever technique you use or use when you work with someone else and work on those lower chakras. Those are very much about rooting and grounding. Do some guided meditations, guided visualizations. All that stuff will really help you tap into your personal power and feel that sense of like, strong and resilient yet flexible groundedness. It's such a beautiful blend, as I said at the beginning, of masculine and feminine energies. It's, it's strong, yet it's soft. It's tough, yet it's flexible. It's, it's so great. So I hope you're getting this concept as I'm explaining it. So again, go within, tap into this personal power, do the mindset work to boost your personal power, and really focus on what you do want which is that strong sense of grounded personal power rather than what you don't want, which is that sense of victimness, like being a victim and feeling weak and just that nasty feeling that you get when you're kind of stuck in that deep, dark well. Other things you can do, you can, again, get help from someone else. Talk to your business friends, talk to your personal friends, talk to your mastermind, talk to your coach, talk to your mentor. Talk to your guides, talk to whomever is supportive in your life, your family, who can help pull you out of this and help you see this situation from a different perspective. So do what you need to do. Practice self-care, read a book, go for a walk, go for a swim, go to the gym, take a bath, put on some essential oils in your diffuser, like do the little things that you do to make yourself feel good. Those little things can also really pull you up out of that dark well of business despair. So do the things that make you happy, do the things that bring you joy, do the things that give you a sense of play. And again, 
This can be hard when you're feeling like crap. Force yourself to do something. Again, whether it's something as simple as putting some nice essential oils in your diffuser and reading a book. Something, do something, listen to a podcast, listen to, watch something that's funny. I don't know. Do whatever you do to make yourself feel better in situations like this. And if you don't know what to do, make a list. Make a list now, make a list when you're feeling better. Make a list of all the little things that you like to do that make you feel better. Put some of the things that I've said here today on. Take a bath, go for a walk, go for a hike, go for a swim, go to the gym, go for a run, essential oils, incense, candles, play with oracle cards, read a book, watch TV, whatever. Make a list of that stuff as kind of your feeling crappy toolkit, and then turn to that list when you're feeling bad. Use that to pull yourself up out of the crappy space and then tap into your sense of personal power and really turn it around and start focusing on your inner power rather than your perceived weakness. So that's all for now. I hope you found this episode useful. I hope that if you're currently going through some business crap, you are able to pull yourself up out of that tap into your personal power and do something differently so that you can move forward. If you have any questions, please get in touch as always, holly at hollywharton.com. You can also join the Facebook group at hollywharton.com forward slash group. You'll be redirected to the Facebook group and we can continue the conversation there. I would love to hear what you think about this episode and if you have any ideas for future episodes. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so you can hear from me every week. And I will see you next week. Please remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 264 for the show notes on this episode. I will have all the links to all the stuff I mentioned in there. Thank you so much and have a great week. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.